<laughs> Hi, Ashley. Good evening. How are you? Hi, Sasmit. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you too. Good evening, Ashley. Wish you the best of health. Thank you, Neha. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, Ashley. Good to make your acquaintance. Hope you get better soon. Hi, Deepak. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. I just got a message from uh, um, Ilana that she's just uh, will be a couple of minutes late. Uh, we can, in fact, uh, I mean, it's just six. We could wait for a minute and we, maybe we can start and she'll join. She just texted that uh, she's on her way and can you just take a couple of more minutes to join. Uh, could, could I get a go ahead also from the technical team that uh, we are good it's, to go? It's, it's live now. Please go ahead. Okay. Wonderful. So I think, I think once uh, we, we, can, we can start the session and uh, I'm sure once uh, Ilana joins, we can, she, she'll be on board and we can continue. So I'll, uh, let's, let's uh, just get started. So a very warm welcome to everyone. A very, very good evening. All our esteemed dignitary speakers, those watching us live on YouTube and from the Fiki Bike platform to the thematic panel of Sport ID 2022. Innovation, effectuation, inclusion, that's our tagline, being organized by Xavier E.M. York Business School in association with the Sports and Youth Services Department, Government of Odessa, Tourism Department, Government of Odessa, Startup Odessa, and of course, Tiki. The theme is sports and tourism, responsibilities and opportunities. But before I begin, I would again, once again, take this opportunity to thank all our partners Everybody who's been a part of this event, uh, sponsors, OMC, industries department, um, you know, everyone who has uh, come forward, our investors, our ventures, Kolkata Sports Ventures, Think You Bait, all our uh, startups. There are about 29 startups who have come from different parts of the country to become a part of this grand event that we are planning for two days. So a big thank you to them. Uh, my entire team, it's a small team of XCBS, but everybody, our dean, our faculty, the students of XCBS, uh, the dual degree master's program, they have been really working hard for, for this event. Some of them might be coordinating with you as well. My colleague, Ankit Chakraborty, everyone, I would like to really thank. And of course, uh, can't start without thanking the team of Fiki, uh, without whose support this wouldn't have been possible. So now, uh, you know, coming back to our theme, like I said, this is a thematic panel and the discussion is on sports and tourism, responsibilities and opportunities. Well, a few years back, if we spoke about sports and tourism together, people would have said, uh, why? But today, when you talk about both these sectors together, you hear a why not. With the emerging trend of mega and global sports events, the advent of leagues and various sporting disciplines, sports tourism in India is really picking up. It is indeed a niche segment, but there seems to be a lot of opportunities out there, particularly after the pandemic has hit both the sectors badly. But are we doing enough? Rather, what all should be focusing on to let these two sectors grow together to benefit each and every stakeholder associated with this sector? And of course, improving the sport fan experience, or let's say the sport fan come tourist experience. For this panel, uh, well, I'm, I'm expecting Ilana to be joining. We'll have the CEO of uh, Hockey India, Ilana, as, as part of this panel. We, of course, right now have with us Rajya Sabha MP, Dr. Sashmit Patra, Managing Director, India, Bhutan, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Operations, Atmosphere, Hotels and Resorts, Mr. Sobhagya Mahapatra, Entrepreneur, Wellness, Fitness Expert, Franchisee Owner of Iron Man in India, Mr. Deepak Raj, MD, QTT Adventure Sports Academy, Private Limited, General Secretary, Surfing Federation of India, and the face of ATY in this uh, session, Mr. Jehan Driver, Fiki Co-Chair Sports Committee and Founder, Words Work Communication, Ms. Neha Mathur Rastogi. So a very, very warm welcome to all of you. So um, I, I, in fact, would like to start, uh, you know, with, with uh, you know, we have with us Dr. Sashmit Patra, Member of Parliament from the Rajya Sabha also the vice chairman in the panel of vice chairman in the, you know, panel uh, of uh, vice chairman in the Rajya Sabha, a chief whip of the Biju Janata Dal Parliamentary Party in the Rajya Sabha and also national spokesperson BJD and someone, you know, who has been instrumental and I have to say it out in getting Xavier EM Law Business School, the only academic high performance center of excellence of the Odisha government become a reality. So uh, I would like to start with uh, Sashmit here because, you know, as far as Odisha is concerned, Sports tourism as a concept, you know, really picked up during the 2018 
Hockey World Cup. And he has been a part of that journey as well. So I would like to share, I would like him to share his thoughts on the topic of sports and tourism, the integration between the two sectors, uh, you know, and where he sees are the opportunities and what the stakeholders should be doing to help both the sectors grow together. So over to you, Sashman. Thank you, Diksha. Thank you for the time and thank you for the warm invitation. Feels like being home with the XCBS CSM uh, uh, platform. And, and uh, many thanks to uh, Ashley, my dear friend and the chairman of uh, Xavier E.M. Leo, and of course, Diksha, who's been the heart behind the entire initiative. And a warm uh, good evening to all our fellow panelists. I, I, before I talk about, uh, and I'll try to be brief, because politicians, when we speak, we don't know when to stop. So I think Diksha, you will kind of help me there. The fact is that sometimes, whenever we talk about tourism and sports in India, primarily, we have all, always looked at this as two silos. We have also always looked at it as verticals. Now, those verticals having an interdisciplinary approach is something that as a nation, we have not been able to appreciate. Now, before even moving towards tourism or sports, let me talk about sports in a brief uh, couple of minutes. Can you imagine a nation which says that its national sport is hockey, could not find a sponsor for hockey till Odessa and Honorable Chief Minister Sri Naveen Patnaik ji decided to sponsor the Indian men and Indian ho women's hockey teams. That speaks volumes about we as a nation when we talk about sports or our focus on sports. And here I must say that it's not because I come from Biju Jantadal or my Chief Minister Naveen Patnaik ji has been working so hard on it. But right down from Hockey World Cup, right down from the time when the Asian Athletics Championship came about, a neighboring state decided suddenly not to support this entire initiative. And in 90 days, 90 days, call it the 90 days miracle, where an Asian Athletics Championship was set up by Odessa and successfully conducted with more than 34 countries participating in Bhubaneswar. I think, therefore, the first aspect I'd like to lay on the table is the political will, because I come from the public policy and the parliamentarian and the legislative platform. Unless you have a political will that determines that, yes, we need to talk about sports, we need to talk about tourism, true, but we need to also have an integrated approach. And let me close by only saying that I recently I asked a very simple question in the parliament. What has happened to Konak as an iconic tourist site after it was identified as an iconic tourist site of the nation among the 17 iconic sites? The reply I got is that the detailed project report is being prepared. So after two years, if the detailed project report is yet to take off, and I'm not trying to criticize anyone, I'm looking at the intent. Unless we as a nation have the intent, the political will, and the drive that comes across through the political classes and the bureaucracy that drives it. We will talk about it, but ultimately to drive it, you need to have the right policies, the right legislations, and the right political will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much, uh, um, you know, Dr. Patra. I think it was straight to the point and you hit the bullseye. Uh, you know, by by ending it, that's you know, you need the right intent. In fact, that that was what was our discussion during the inaugural ceremony as well. That the intent is is very important, and it's it's just not about you know getting in whether it's a political uh, you know the will, the government support. Everything has to fall in place for actually uh, you know do both of these sectors to grow together. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, I would like to welcome. Uh, I think uh, we we have the CEO of Hockey India, Elana Norman. She's already joined us. Uh, Ilana, uh, could you, could you, if you could just check, uh, we could check, yes, perfect. Uh, can we do a sound check as well? Because I was just going to talk to you. <laughs> sure, I think, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I, we can. Could you, uh, would it be possible for you to increase the, uh, uh, the volume a bit in your in your system, like if it's it's a little possible. <laughs> so it may be a bit technical for me, but let's see how. Doreen, I can I can maybe talk a little bit louder if that helps. Yeah, yeah, I think this this is perfectly fine. So I think we were just talking about. Uh, I know Dr. Patra spoke about the Orissa government. The CEO of Hockey India, Elana Nomar, I call her the power woman of Indian hockey, and ever since, in fact, everybody knows that she's taken charge. Indian hockey actually has taken the flight to touch the sky and the historic achievement at Tokyo Olympics for the men's team ended up, ended the country's 41-year-old wait for a medal in the women's team superlatives. They are actually all stuff of the legend. 
it all happened under her leadership. In fact, during the inauguration ceremony also, uh, Mr. Vikram Gupta from Ashtak today, Lana spoke about this. And uh, her ferocious determination to take hockey in the country to the future in the last five years will be etched in golden le le uh, letters. Both the men's and women's national teams' performances across international tournaments, rankings, development, growth of hockey infrastructure, and popularity stand testimony to her commitment. And of course, the entire nation awaits for the 2023 Hockey World Cup now. I would first like to congratulate you because I know officially the logo was launched yesterday and now the countdown has really begun. So congratulations for that. And uh, straight to the point, as someone who has been associated with this sector for years together, being a part of global events, what is your opinion on, on the integration between sports and tourism? I think it's key. We all know that sports fans are very passionate. They're very driven individuals. So I think um, giving them another option to to travel or to go and see their favourite sport and to have new experiences or and or experience new cultures, I think is really key. And I, I think that's one of the really nice things about bringing uh, events to India is because India, you know, I mean, in itself is... Um, you know, I mean, is an experience, but giving people that extra motivation or extra opportunity or extra rationale to come to India, I think, um, you know, I mean, is key. The first time I actually came to India was with was to watch the cricket team, the Australian cricket team, come to India in two thousand and one. And I actually tell you, I probably would not be here today if I didn't experience that. You know, I mean, I went home after that, and I was like. Wow, India, I want to learn Hindi. I got a big thick book about this thick and I was like, okay, here we go. I got to, I think, page three, which was the vowels and my tongue wouldn't roll. And I was like, okay, forget about that. You know, and in my, obviously my whole destiny has, has a revolved around that one thought of saying, I want to go and I want to experience cricket in India you know, it was it was that tour of no, it was two thousand four, and it was about the chance I think when in Australia was probably going to win on the on the subcontinent for the first time in maybe thirty years or something. It was going to be Steve Wars. So my, myself, I have experienced it, and it obviously has taken me on a completely different journey. That if you had asked me at that time, you know, what I mean, would never have I would never have thought I am where I am today. So, you know, what I mean. It can be absolute. You know, I mean, I'm a prime example of how it can be absolutely life changing to come and do that. And I know many people who have come and experienced places like India as part of doing it for a sporting love, and it's ended up they've they've fallen in love with the country and it's kind of transformed them. So, you know, I mean, I think it's key. You know, it has a key opportunity for you know, I mean, bringing those passionate people to to a country. Um, I really think you need to make sure that you've got that um, those opportunities and the call to action, because I know that when I came here, it was a real challenge. It was like, OK, where am I going to stay? How do I get tickets? Where do I do this and how do I do that? If you can make it a one stop shop that people will get, they guaranteed to get tickets there. Um, you know, what I mean, they they know that they've got decent accommodation or accommodation at their expectations, as well as how do I get to games? Um, you know what I mean? It's it's a win-win. It's it's a massive opportunity. I, I can tell you, even working on hockey, we have, um, you know what I mean, parents that write to us. I try and encourage anyone who wants to come to India, if you're a parent, and many of them will just say to me, Elena, how can I get tickets? I'm like, you know me now. You've got a ticket. You come to India, I will guarantee you, you that's the least of your worries. So, you know what I mean? Them knowing that they've got a ticket and that they can call me or something, then you know what I mean? It's a pretty much done deal for them. So, so I think the biggest thing about it is making sure that it's accessible, making sure if you're promoting a sport or an event, uh, especially in India or, or anywhere, that you have that call to action. If someone goes, if someone sees an advert or they see some news or they see our logo launch, it's like, okay, what is now the call to action for those people to be able to go, I like that, I want to do that, and how can I do it? I think perfect. I mean, I I think this has been brilliant because you you've given your perspective from a fan. Uh, you know, like you said, you came to India to watch cricket and you fell in love with the with the country as well, and you wanted to learn Hindi. So that's exactly what I was talking about: a fan and a fan come. You know, a tourist experience. That that's that's very important. In fact, since we were talking about uh, you know hockey World Cup, also 
uh, when I said that Odisha had started this uh, trend of sports tourism during the Hockey World Cup, I think that was a campaign that was taken on a very serious note, hockey by the day and Odisha by the evening. That was something that really gained a lot of traction and uh, not just within the country, but even, even uh, outside, outside the country as well. And, and a lot of tourists and a lot of fans came uh, you know, to to Odisha because because of hockey and because of uh, you know this entire thing. On on that same note, I mean, of course, we'll we'll take some more questions after all our panelists have shared their thoughts, uh, and then you know there are questions from the audience as well. On the same note, I would like to go to uh, Mr. Raj, co-founder. Yoska, one of the leading Indian, uh, Indian triathletes, he's had a phenomenal transformation journey from an unfit 95 kilos to being an ambassador for triathlon in India, driving the growth of the sport in India. He's also the CEO and co-founder of Yoska, which provides online training programs for running, cycling, triathlon and general fitness using the digital uh, platforms. They're also the franchisee owner for Ironman in India. They organized the first ever Ironman event in India. Uh, also the race director for Ironman 70.3 in uh, Goa. And many notable achievements to his credit has completed 22 Ironman triathlons, 3.8 kilometers uh, swim, 180.2 kilometers cycling, 42.2 kilometer running across the globe. And with the best time of 10 hours, uh, 19 minute, 18 second hour, and I, I can't even run for an hour. So again, someone who understands the significance of sporting events and tourism. So I would, I would like to uh, hear your thoughts on this. I, I guess you will have to, you will have to unmute. <laughs> That's something that we all keep forgetting in a virtual event. Yeah, no, sorry. Uh, thanks, thanks for the opportunity and the platform, and uh, it's um, very grateful for it, and uh, quite honored to be part of the panel. Uh, so I think, uh, in terms of the Ironman and the triathlon, uh, we come from a participative sport as opposed to a spectator sport, right? Uh, as much as there are a lot of spectators and they want to see the event, I think we come from a participative sport but angle. Uh, so like, like uh, anybody who wants to travel. Right, so people want to come to India to do a race. Now, when we got Ironman to India, uh, 53 countries had already hosted an Ironman before India became, or 52, I should say. And India was the 53rd country to eventually put up its hand. Uh, obviously, uh, as a startup, as a founder, and things, we felt it shouldn't have taken that long, right? But once again, touching upon maybe a few areas of, uh, you know, uh, obviously the policies and a bit of a support system, I think is important. I have already seen a change in the last two plus years, uh, the governments and other things being extremely supportive. Uh, but yes, uh, I think uh, there are a few areas there where if more support can be done, because we had 30 plus countries, uh, participations from 30 plus countries when we hosted the India's first ever Ironman event in Goa in 2019, right? So you're talking about sports and tourism, right? So these are events where people actually spend nine to 12 months training for it. So they're not going to just show up here for a couple of days, do the event and go back. Everybody, one of them plans around it. They get their families, uh, they spend there maybe a week, maybe even more. And uh, it's quite an expensive sport, which means they are not just going to uh, you know, take the trouble of getting this far with, with, without spending and soaking in the culture and the experience. Like Elena was saying, how can you make it a little more easy for them to to give them the best experience, right? You're talking about, you know, uh, by the time people figure out, okay, where do I land? What do I do? We had sold out the event. We would have had a lot more foreign participations last year around in 2019, last edition, because by the time they could figure out a few things right to us, we did our best, we did a lot of FAQs. So I think it's important to just support them a bit more, which is primarily on us and also, you know, on the, uh, secondary sort of, you know, uh, support systems. That's number one. Because Ironman and Triathlon, it's like a traveling circus. We just land up in a city and we do, uh, you know, block roads and everything and people wondering what this is. There's a bit of a novelty to it. But once an event happens in a city, that city, that state gets so much of, you know, uh, obviously tourism focus, puts that city and the state on the map, on the global front. And there are a lot more people traveling. So I think for us, it's a participative sport, which means you'll get thousands of people in, not just the teams who are playing, right? And the spectators. So that's one thing which I think uh, is, is something which is, uh, which is very important for us. Uh, so yeah, we are very thankful and grateful like Goa government started the support and helped us launch the first event. And that will be one of many 
but uh, coming back i think uh, the opportunity is just limitless uh, with uh, with everyone wanting to come to india uh, they are looking for reasons so triathlon is such a popular sport overseas uh, they may visit india not just because we are hosting a race but because they wanted to see india they might come here for a month they might come here for a week but they'll definitely spend time so obviously the opportunities exist and we are starting to see good support uh, but obviously you know a few more things could be done and uh, we are we are equally interested to see how we could help accelerate that part of it uh, in various regions across india all right uh, thank you in fact i would just like to inform all our panelists before you know since elana spoke about it uh, mr deepak you also spoke about it a lot of these entrepreneurs who have come on board uh, you know for this for this event today a lot of them are working in those directions when you're talking about how to make events accessible you know uh, user experience when it comes to events and fan engagement these are these are in fact entrepreneurial spirit in the youth is also something that could help sports tourism as a as a domain if more and more youngsters come forward uh, you know to take care of these little things which are a little gaps which are which are which need to be taken care of i think a, a lot of difference can be uh, can be made so of course we will we, we are in fact already having some questions but we'll take that later i i'll, I'll go to mr sobhagya mahapatra we i mean we, we just had a chat in the afternoon uh, you know on on this topic chairman fiki eastern region tourism committee md atmosphere hotels and resorts for india nepal bhutan sri lanka operations hospitality and tourism industry professional with an exceptional record of success in developing and management of luxury hotels building excellent guest relationship improving revenue performance brand building launching of properties has contributed for over nearly close to 30 years now actively in development of the hospitality and tourism industry has been associated with various reputed organization national association odisha state tourism promotion council hotel and restaurant association of eastern india hotelia india and many more so he understands the tourism sector like no one better and i would want him to throw some light on the synergies and the potentials he sees for both the sectors of sports and tourism and uh, you know i think mr raj just said that when when even an event like like this is organized people just don't come for a day they come and they spend a time uh you know they spend a week they spend a time with the family and this was something we were having a discussion earlier during the day as well so i request uh, mr mahapatra to share his thoughts on this thank you diksha ji for giving me opportunity to be a part of this esteemed panel and uh, respected my fellow panelist welcome to this so thank you dr sasmit patra for reminding me in the those 90 days Which I was a part of that uh, team, as uh, from the hospitality side. You know, before that, you know, any any events happens like you know in Odisha, that happens like you know, uh, either cricket or some other uh, events. But from the two 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 thousand seventeen, after those ninety days, people started recognizing sports is a segment in the tourism. and after 2017 again 2018 give us really boost in the tourism because of the world cup hockey i must tell you sports has become an important integral segment of tourism like other segments such as mice and wedding travel and hospital industry gets a boost in all season in room occupancy food and beverage revenue car hire other revenue etc it helps in enhancing the footfall of both domestic and international tourism to our country and states the periphery tourism destination within 150 km radius also gets a boost with domestic and international tourists allied industries such as airlines handicraft entertainment industry also gets a boost with the enhanced footfall and revenues even management industries event management industry has become an integral part of sport and maximum revenue earned for sport tourism it enabled services its during this technology era is the most important aspects of sports tourism and if you if you must have marked when there is a sports tourism that helps a creating lot of job opportunities for traveler tourism aspirant for temporary or permanently this is what i feel from the tourism point of view thank you diksha ji 
Thank you. Thank you so much. In fact, yes, employment generation is, is, is a very important point here when we are talking about it. It's just not about promotion of sports tourism, but uh, the value addition that, that happens uh, with it and uh, you know, to the entire ecosystem and employment gen generation is an important aspect to it. Well, from tourism, we move to adventure tourism. We have with us Mr. Jehan Driver, uh, the face of ATOI for this session as well, and he's been an active promoter of aquatic sports, operates an adventure sports academy located on the east coast of India. Over the, over the years, he's put in a lot of effort to support sports association as well as develop aquatic sport at a grassroots level within the country. He's a, an instructor in a variety of sports, including kite surfing, uh, kayaking, sailing, and a lifeguard trainer as well. Has organized a few international kiteboarding events as well and has led numerous coastal expeditions in India. So, uh, Mr. Jahan Driver, as someone representing this niche segment of adventure tourism in this panel, what are your thoughts on this theme? Am I audible? Yes, yes, you are. So, um, like uh, Deepak said, you know, adventure tourism is pretty much a participative uh, sport. And uh, geography attracts uh, athletes and enthusiasts to our country, Spe specifically when we talk about the coastal regions. Um, we've got more than 7,600 kilometers of coastline, plenty of lakes. So in the aquatic space, uh, most definitely we attract a lot of enthusiast athletes coming down to the country to either learn, practice, or participate in a variety of aquatic sports like surfing, kayaking, kite surfing, um, you know, not to ignore um, the mountains or, you know, the boulders. Um, you might find a bunch of speed climbers, uh, boulderers going down to Hampi and Badami to climb. So, Participative sports in the adventure sports realm um, are definitely clubbed with tourism um, because in the end, they do come here for the geography and get exposed to the arts, culture, history of the region. Uh, over the last few years, um, there have been a lot of <clears throat> um, competitions that have been organized in uh, the adventure sports realm. So we've got, for example, in surfing, um, you know, we hosted, you know, the Asian Surfing Championship, which attracted more than 200 international athletes to come down and participate for an entire week. Um, also enjoying the local flavors that the town was able to offer them. Uh, there were surfing festivals organized in Orissa around about a decade ago. And every year, uh, a variety of the sports federations have been organizing uh, competitive as well as recreational, um, you know, gatherings for people to come and participate. So definitely the future is um, really promising. Um, we've got to create more awareness about, um, you know, these niche, uh, you know, sports um, in the adventure sports segment, uh, you know, when it comes to participative or uh, being recreational. I, I think thank you. In fact, I was uh, I was just getting uh, one of the entrepreneurs here has he was just texting as he was listening to you who's participated in the mashup. He was saying I would love to uh, you know uh, connect with Mr. Jehan if it's possible. So I was just responding to him when you uh, you know on this. But I would request all our panelists. I mean before I mean you know the, please do visit the stalls if you get time. Uh, as I've said, these startups have come on board. There are about 29 of them on the platform. It's a virtual exhibition. So I'll also request our panelists, if they get some time, it's there till tomorrow evening. So if you please get some time, uh, do visit them. And if if possible, please have an interaction with, with them. It, it, it'll be great. And, and given the points that we are discussing right now, I'm, I'm sure there, there will be some of them who could, who could uh, you know, who could get some guidance and tips from all of you. So uh, that's, that's, a, that's a humble request from my side. Well, uh, we also have with us founder of Words Work Communication Consulting and, of course, the co-chair for uh, the Sports Committee, FICI, with over 18 years of experience in public relations, corporate brand communication, and media planning. She started Words Work in 2009 and has, within a very short span, spearheaded successful communication campaigns for brands, 
ranging from lifestyle, corporate, public diplomacy to sports. And she leads strategy and content for all Wordsworth clients and has a vast experience with clients, including, uh, you know, uh, Embassy of Netherlands, Foreign Investment Agency, Embassy of France, Embassy of Israel, has also a strong expertise in sports and has periodic communication for Kalo India among ongoing work with national federations, including hockey and football. So Neha, your perspective would be very interesting here because you've been a part of the industry too for a long time, but from a PR and a media side. So how do you perceive this correlation between these two domains? Thanks a lot, Diksha. A lot of familiar faces here with, of course, relationship with Alana going almost as far as since she's been here with Deepak for Iron Man and uh, happy to see everyone else here. I think uh, I'll always wear a communications lens to everything that I see. And I think we have all the ingredients here uh, to bring these two industries together. Like Dr. Patra said right at the start, uh, it is a matter of bringing the two industries together and laying out the opportunities that they come with. Um, whether you look at it as a spectator-driven uh, piece or you look at it as a participative piece, and I'm glad we had both the perspectives here today, uh, the cure, the main part that needs to be brought together is curation of experiences. So I think uh, for the entrepreneurs who are here today, if they can work towards curating experiences and joining the dots uh, between the sporting activities and events, and there is a plethora of them here now, uh, we have big global events coming to India, have already come to India. Uh, we have huge opportunity in participative sport with the likes of Ironman and the marathons. And then if you look at adventure tourism, that is a completely different thing altogether, right from you know mountain climbing to skiing now becoming a big thing over here. So I think if we look at the industry as a whole, there's a huge amount of opportunities that we can look at holistically, which creates a calendar of initiatives uh, through the year, which people can work towards curating. But that has to be done without being in silos of each other. I think we need to work with the state tourism boards. We need to work with the individual events. We need to work with curators of experiences, for example, like Jehan, and put it together into packages that work. And those packages then go forward in terms of getting more participation, which is wider. And let's also look at it both from a domestic and an international perspective, because it does work. Uh, across both of these areas as well. So that there's, like I said, it's a matrix of opportunities which we need to bring together. And at the end of the day, if you look at it from that broader view, you can also grow it into mice. You can also grow it into h &I experientials. And that's what people are looking for these days. So pure plain tourism is now out of the window. And I think bringing sport into it, whether from a spectator or a fan perspective or into a participative view, would be a great way to do it. And one last thing I'd like to say is your biggest ambassadors would be people who are participating in these activities already. So I remember when I was uh, working in motorsport and we were doing A1 GP, which was a country versus country motorsport format, we'd set aside one day for these athletes to do a tourism activity representing that particular country. And that was showcased to the world. Now, this was a long time back and now we have social media. So I think finding ways to create my micro influencers out of the people participating in these events to showcase to the world back home uh, what they're experiencing here is a, is a latent opportunity we all should explore. So yes, a lot of opportunities here needs to be curated together and that is where the opportunity is. Very, very rightly said. Yes, a lot of opportunities, but needs to be curated. And yes, the potential is huge. I mean, uh, like you said, plane tourism is out of the window and, and this is something which, which really is uh, you know, gaining a lot of traction. We have some questions from the audience before we, uh, you know, take it up, uh, you know, some more uh, questions from, you know, when I asked before. I, I, in fact, have a question from our chairman as well. So I'll request him to, uh, you know, uh, the chairman of XCBS uh, to, to please unmute and ask the question himself. He sent it to me. I said, no, you must do it yourself. <laughs> okay, thank you. D thank you, Diksha. Uh, Hello, everybody. Once again, uh, actually, I, I I simply loved what Nia just said. I, I think it's 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 very very uh, it's very very in, interesting, important. Uh, what I take from uh, from her uh, her uh, introductory remarks is um, hybridization. I think uh, what what the point of what we were trying to do with uh, this whole event and it, uh, the uh, the uh, the idea we were trying to push is we would like to create hybrid events and uh, experiential uh, uh, events are very, very important. And from that perspective, I have a question for Elena. Uh, she, I mean, obviously uh, we've, we've known each other for a long time also. Uh, um, I think uh, 
uh, that given the importance that Hockey India has today, uh, I, why doesn't Hockey India be the central point or the, uh, the driver of experiential uh, uh, learning and create bridges between uh, physical events in the sporting field and cultural events and educational events, et cetera, et cetera. In other words, broaden the perspective of people coming to hockey events. And for that matter, it can be, you know, it can be uh, done by other sporting federations uh, as well. Um, why doesn't Hockey India take the lead in, in creating uh, such, a, such a, a new experiential uh, um, you know, drive for, for people coming to, to India? And I know that Hockey India is quite influential at the International Hockey Federation level as well. So when uh, Nia was talking about, you know, thinking about globally, I think that would be a very, uh, very innovative uh, stance taken by Hockey India. So Elena, I hope you don't mind taking this question. I think there's probably a couple of answers to that. One is obviously if I had the resources, then, then obviously things would be a little bit different as well. Obviously our mandate is primarily promoting hockey. So you know I mean, diverting our resources to maybe uh, something else might be, might, it, it's probably just really not possible to give you the, 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 the real answer. Um, but one thing we did try and do with the World Cup, and I think when we talk about um, experiences and, and having, and Neha mentioned it, or I think Diksha mentioned it as well, as well before, is that we talked about with the last World Cup that it was Odisha by day, hockey by night. And we, uh, we understood that people were coming here, so we wanted to give them that holistic experience. And then um, working with Odisha government as well, we looked at um, some of their regular events that they held um, annually. And what we did was, okay, let's try and uh, put those in at the same time as the Hockey World Cup. So we actually worked with a number of stakeholders. Uh, there was actually, a, I think it's festive, festive, festive something that they started during the World Cup as well, which was after the games, you could go there and then it was like, it showcased kind of local music and entertainment. And that, you know, and they used basically the World Cup um, Normally we would use something else to promote the World Cup. We use the World Cup to promote this, to get people out there, to understand the culture, to the music, to taste the food. So every night at, the, at this festival, there would be a different food tasting. So I think if you can get, uh, you know I mean? Obviously not, everyone's not gonna be as good as, as the Odisha government in terms of how they put things forward. But I really think, you know I mean? These are the right stakeholders. Um, along with like the support of, of whoever's hosting the event as well. Obviously we made sure that the, the scheduling of the events tied in. We, we did everything we could. We got teams and uh, we've got some of the international teams, some uh, like the Indian team to go and visit these festivals as well. So that not just were they showcasing it on social media but people could see that they were there um, as well. And it was a highlight as well for those festivals that you could come and meet the team and sign autographs and all of that stuff. So I think if you can get um, a government that has that proactive approach and kind of consciously understands that, you know what I mean, we're do, you know what I mean, with these kind of major events that you can also leverage it to, you know what I mean, put forward your local arts and crafts. So then people are, you know what I mean, it's easy for people to buy products and everything. And that just obviously adds to a whole new dimension and, and experience for the events. Ashley, does that, uh... It probably didn't answer exactly the question. He wanted me to come and do all the work. And, and actually, if I had the time, believe me, I would. No, have had no. What I what, what I really meant uh, what I really meant, Elena, was that um, I think you guys are are an incredible, you know, uh, driver in in curating and creating new experiences for for your fans, basically. And I think uh, if 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 one or two, you know, powerful federations, you're one of the best working power federation in, in, in sport right now so i think you could definitely take the lead in this but i would this question could also be uh, you know answered by by uh, by sashmet in terms of education in terms of culture in terms of art i mean i think there's a there's a whole lot of experiences that that people want to get into but they just don't have the uh, the uh, the opportunity to 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 figure it out and uh, if there is some sort of you know uh, I uh, one or two or three organizations getting together and curating and creating, as Nia said, I think it's all about curating and creating 
the, these experiences. So it can be it can be from top to bottom. I mean, it can be a, a powerful federation teaming up with startups, uh, you know, with uh, with public uh, private funding, etc. Cetera, et cetera. There's a whole new business model, I think, that that's out there that can be that can be looked into. And from my perspective, I'm sorry, I'm being very you know very very selfish, but from my perspective, being in a higher education institution, that's what we're trying to promote. We're trying to promote you know the the the, the knowledge and the skills to create a new new models for for uh, for for our stakeholders so that that was the that was more the 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 angle i was like i was trying to pursue that's all but i appreciate your answer elena as, as always uh, and i appreciate your determination all right uh, we, your permission? We are... yes 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 Ashwin, please. Yeah, because because ashley you know gave me a little side window to come in so i will take that side window and uh, you know it's very interesting because Elena is here and she was there in the same parliamentary committee meeting in which I was there on the standing committee of uh, education and uh, women and child and sports and youth affairs. So there were three committees or three ministries that I'm a part of, or I was now moved to law and justice. So in the sports and youth affairs, there was a parliamentary uh, deposition and you had the hockey India there. Elena was there and there was uh, the, the, the sports authority of India there were different federations. And because, Ashley, you talked about federations, and this is Elena would have uh, really uh, you know, felt that day. As soon as the discussion started about Hockey India, people started saying, why are you doing it the way you're doing it? Why shouldn't there be more control? Why is it that Hockey India does not have, listen to us? Why is it that you do not have to do what we want you to do? Why is it? So, Elena, you know, that day, she was just saying, okay, we will look into it. And I can appreciate that's the position because in a parliamentary committee, you know, that there's very little that she could have done beyond it. But the fact is, as I said in my opening remarks, it's not about India. I, and I, and I, I want to talk about India primarily because we talk about sports and tourism. And Ashley, you have been instrumental part of seeing sports and tourism together since 2016 in Orissa from the time you have actually come in with the CBS. The reason is, the policy making is very myopic. When we talk about curating experiences, how do you curate, which, which Neaji said, let's curate experiences. One is federations can do that, but can a federation like Hockey India can probably do it because it has the latitude and the longitude to do it. But can other, I don't want to name federations, but there are certain federations that are literally run by politicians. And those politicians are elected election after election and they treat those federations like they feed them. So you, we have to go beyond the optics. We have to go beyond what is just being a myopic vision. And to do that, we have to appreciate that the world is going on a very different dimension. And, and, and the beautiful thing that was actually done during the Hockey World Cup in Odessa was there were a number of events which were on the sidelines of the games. And as Diksha said, at that point of time, it's hockey by the day and Odessa by night. So Odessa is not a Goa, Puri is not Goa, but Odessa has its own traditions. It has its own beautiful culture, its cuisine, its music, its dialects, what it brings on the table. So I believe every region, every place, every sport that is played in every tournament creates its own unique features. And to be able to do that, while Hockey India can try and do something, they are straight jacketed because of the policies because of the vision that continues to say, well, sports and education can't come together. They're different. Sports and tourism can't come together. They are different. Sports Authority of India has no common ground with the tourism ministry. They can't come together. I think when we, as, as Ashley said, and I love that word from Ashley, I've been hearing it for the last five years, hybridization, tropicalization is another word that he uses, as in use it now. So we have to tropicalize, we have to hybridize, we have to break those stereotypes that tells that one cannot touch the other. And I believe there is a two-way communication. And I'll stop now. I can continue. I'll stop now. Uh, well, uh, you know, in fact, this was what I was going to ask all the panelists now, and Sashman's already started it, because we, I think, during this entire panel so far, whatever the discussion we've been having, I think everybody, each one of them has, has stressed on the importance of 
the opportunities that's present in, in, in this integration of sports and tourism. However, everybody has also said that, you know, there are certain loopholes, there's certain things that needs to be uh, addressed. There, there's this curation of experiences that we've been hearing about it. And, uh, you know, intent, uh, whether it is uh, political will, whether it is better information, accessibility, uh, better awareness. These are certain aspects which were in some form or the other raised by all our panelists here. Uh, I would like to take, so when it comes to, you know, the second part of the topic, you know, we, we said about opportunities on the responsibilities. So, uh, you know, I would like to take all your opinion on where do you think, I mean, fine, we, we've identified that there is, a, there is an opportunity, but what do we do now? I mean, what, how do we make this better? Uh, you know, instead of just talking about curation of experiences, what do we do for a better curation of experiences? Do we bring in, like I said, is it is it about federations? Is it about government? Is it about the political will? Is it about entrepreneurs? Is it about fans? Or is it about an integration, a little bit of everything together? What, what would be your suggestion, uh, you know, uh, because at the end of the day, that's what we should we are looking at to work towards. So I, I'd like to take everyone's opinion. I think Sashmith has already raised uh, you know, a bit of it in his address. Uh, you know, when he talks about hybridization, which he says is Ashley's favorite word. I've also been hearing it for the last five years, yes. And, uh, uh, but yes, I, I would like to take all your opinion on this before we take to some questions from the, uh, and ended with the audience questions as well. So um, uh, how, how about, uh, uh, maybe we start with Mr. Deepak. What do, you, what do you have to say about this? No, I think uh, that entire ecosystem is is huge, right? Just uh, talking about what we bring in on terms once the event happens, we not only bring people and things, uh, we are a very asset heavy event, right? I'm sure it's the same with adventure sports when you set up in a new places. So there's a lot of local economies, just not transitory for three days or five days, right? That's one thing which I think is huge. And, uh, you know, whatever the terms are uh, in terms of, you know, trying to combine sports and tourism, uh, there is there is a very large opportunity. And it's, we have seen that in other events. There are other events where the title sponsor or a principal sponsor of an Ironman event is actually the state tourism, right? Uh, the Keynes in Queensland, the Great Barrier Reef, that has enough, uh, you know, enough people already visiting there as tourism, but they feel they want to do more. So Keynes Airport and the Queensland Tourism in Australia is the prime sponsor for an Ironman event. And I've seen it grow myself in the last 10 years from where it was to what it is. And then the entire ecosystem around that, right? So obviously the last two years, just because we didn't have events in some countries, you also saw the rest of the industries being impacted, not just the event industry or the participation. So it goes without saying that, you know, there is, there is a fair amount of opportunity there. Uh, I think uh, it's important for, uh, you know, Neha also touched upon that, that curated experience. People take back experiences, the food they ate, the people they met, the places they visited, and every person who goes back is going to talk about it in their community. Because it's a participative sport, the community is not just somebody who watches, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's not a shared on hockey or cricket, but in this case, it's a participative sport, which means there could be 10,000 runners who will hear about the sport in their native country, right? So, so, so that's something which we feel uh, we are very keen to work uh, on those areas and definitely the potential is large like everybody here at this. Thank you, uh, thank you. I, 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 I would like to go to Mr. Jehan also on, on this that, uh, you know, of course the entire ecosystem has to come together as very uh, rightly pointed out, it's, it's just not about the government or or like a federation or an organization. Uh, since we have a lot of entrepreneurs, I mean, uh, Mr. Jan, I would also like to take your opinion. Like, like I said, there are a lot of entrepreneurs who have been a part of this event, and this is something that uh, that they, they should also have a takeaway from this session. Where do you think, uh, you know, entrepreneurs working in, in, in these sectors can come into play and, uh, you know, uh, so that in, in the curation of experiences, uh, how do you see them? So the time, the time is right at the moment um, for, you know, everyone to get together, um, you know, with more entrepreneurs getting into the space, uh, technology is really booming when it comes to, you know, just overall coordination, creating awareness. Um, during this entire pandemic, everyone's been online, you know, searching, looking, uh, understanding, creating <clears throat> different avenues to go and explore uh, different things. So the time is right. Now, how do we go about it? Uh, we go about it by talking to each other, 
understanding what's there and creating platforms. Uh, you know, the fact that we are all um, talking about this today, it's being, uh, you know, uh, streamed live. There are a lot of entrepreneurs paying attention to, you know, what a lot of uh, the panelists have to say is actually a step forward. Now, the environment as well as really improved um, to be more conducive for us to conduct such events. Um, it is becoming a lot easier for us to create awareness about remote locations using the internet, using technology. Um, you know, often people ask me, um, you know, in the most remote parts of the country, uh, on a coastal beach somewhere, you might see a couple of hundred surfers or, you know, a dozen kite surfers out there from all around the world. And um, people ask, how, the, how did they come here? How did they even come to know about this small village, you know, in the middle of nowhere? The thing is, they know. They know because uh, we follow geography. We follow, uh, you know, the wind. We follow uh, the swell. And technology is helping us find this, right? Um, you've got better forecasting websites. You've got, you know, um, easy access to articles through different sports journals, through different newspapers. So I think um, over and above um, everything, um, you know, it's working out together. Uh, on a government level, there are also uh, good initiatives that have been taken through the Skill India campaigns. Um, there is SPFL SC, the Sports Skill Council, which is helping create that bridge between um, you know, participant sport, recreation, and education. Now there is a gap that's being bridged through that. So a recreational sports enthusiast is able to get some kind of education uh, in the sport. Let's, for example, take kayaking. If you think about kayaking, yes, it, it is an Olympic sport. You can compete in it. But what happens to the exploration on a kayak? Um, you know, we've had an Australian lady kayak from Germany to Australia. It took her eight years to do that. It took her three years to kayak along the coast of India. When she was kayaking, we were giving her immense support, but she was able to motivate three other kayakers who kayak from Bombay to Goa. Some people kayaked along the coastline of Orissa. So the exploratory side of things as well. Uh, the education is important for sure, because how do we know People are doing it in a safe way, in a secure way. So that's where everything bridges and ties in together. So you've got, you know, state governments, you've got central government, you've got, you know, education, you've got the sports federations. Um, and of course, you've got the lifestyle magazines covering and bringing everything out together. Um, yeah, I think uh, the time is right. I think entrepreneurs who are paying attention uh, to this live, uh, you know, feel free to ask questions. Feel free to network and, uh, you know, push on with, you know, uh, sports, tourism, education, because that is the future. Wonderful. Uh, that's, that's great. In fact, on this note, there, there's actually a question for you. I mean, I, there are, in fact, a lot of questions coming in uh, from the audience. So uh, there's, there's one question on surfing, since you've mentioned it. Uh, um, there's there's uh, Ananta Prasad, he's, he's an entrepreneur from Odessa, and his question to you is, how do you see surfing as a culture in the 480 kilometer coastline in, in Odessa, and how does one collaborate with SP, SFI? So Odessa actually has a fantastic coastline. Uh, the swell is great, and there are a couple of schools that have already established and started in the state. Um, to collaborate with the Surfing Federation of India, it's as simple as reaching out. Um, you know, most of, um, you know, our members, as well as our panel, are surfers. Yeah, we, we have 100% representation from the sportive side in the Federation. So it's pretty easy to reach out to us. You can contact us on email, Instagram, anywhere, ask a question, and we are happy to help you. Uh, the future is great. But you must focus on the education and the safety behind the sport before you think about doing anything else. So there are courses that are being, uh, you know, launched by the Surfing Federation of India through the International Association, which is ISA. And these courses are organized on a regular basis. Um, it's the grassroots outreach that we do to get people in the sport safely. Um, sign up for a course, write into us, 
we'll be able to show you how to kind of boost this lovely sport through the state. Same goes with kite surfing and other sports as well. We are happy to help out as much as we can. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll move to Mr. Sobhagya Mahapatra. In fact, uh, you know, as you share your thoughts, your last thoughts on, on this, there's also a question for you. Uh, again, from Ananda. Ananda apparently seems to be very active on the bike platform. So this is also a question from him. He says, do you think Odisha lacks in having a sports and recreational uh, club uh, resort? Uh, you know, do you, do you, what do you, what, what's your thought on on that, uh, this is this is a question from him. He, he means resorts having own sports infrastructure uh, of international uh, standard. So uh, that is a question that he wants to, uh, you know, for, for you to address. And do yes. you see a gap there? Yes, absolutely correct. It is uh, still it is like you know lacking. But I think I know few of the uh, hospitality uh, sector, like few hotels have uh, you know indoor or outdoor some of the facilities. But is required to be improved. Required, required to be because so many uh, segment of tourism is a segment of sports is coming. So automatically, we require to be concentrated. We require to be uh, like you know hospitality sector has to be come in that way to provide those facilities, recreational facilities. Then in automatically the like players or the uh, sports person who are coming, they will be uh, attracts to the. Uh, to this, what they call to our industry. Okay, one wonderful. Uh, there's 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 uh, some more questions also there. Um, there's there's a question on. Um, I'm sorry, my I have a. This is from Sora, uh, one of our students. In fact, so I totally agree on the fact that sports and tourism can go simultaneously as time and again. Uh, sports has created a brand for a city, state, or even a country. Uh, for example, Qatar's take on organizing FIFA World Cup to promote development also, it goes with F1 as one of the main source of a, a income as uh, uh, a fees given to host a race on a track uh, in their country itself to promote tourism. I am sorry, Saurabh, but I don't see the question. I think it was, he's just given a, uh, he's given a, his opinion that uh, sports and tourism go hand in hand. Uh, we have a question for uh, Mr. Sashmit uh, Patra as uh, well from Vishnu Satpati, uh, he says that an outside, as an outsider, how can we join hands with the government to promote sports tourism? He's an entrepreneur, I believe. You see, I would suggest, please go and meet the tourism department. They are a set of, as Diksha would vouch, uh, they are a set of extremely entrepreneurial people. And the way the tourism department, and that is the reason why Odessa is today doing so well in tourism and is able to integrate things with sports, it's primarily because of the <coughs> and the professional help that they take. On one hand, if you see, there are many uh, tourism departments in various state governments, and I do meet them, including the Ministry of Culture, where even today there is a very bureaucratic way of approaching things. But the state of Odessa, and I must give due credit to uh, the former secretary, Mr. Vishal Dev, who was there and he initiated that entire process of uh, entrepreneurial uh, approach to tourism and the way he built it into sports as well. And I believe, I think you need to go and meet with the tourism secretary, please meet the tourism director. There are a number of startups who are working hand in hand with the state government and you'd be happy to know that 90% of the processes that are there, which leads even from the Hockey World Cup and even leading up to the next World Cup, a lot of the logistics as well as the various elements of uh, uh, experiences are actually shared and done by startups and not the government. The government handholds the process, but allows absolute leverage for startups and entrepreneurs to come, execute, deliver, and add to the experience because the Odessa government, especially the tourism department of Odessa, understands and appreciates that bureaucracy can work in a certain way, but it's entrepreneurs who actually add to the value of experiences and understand it. Just like, you know, we have Deepak ji or we have Jahan ji, the way they are running it, or Neha ji who's running Wordsworth in terms of actually creating communication. When they come on board, they bring with them a different skill set, a different approach, a different horizon. And that really adds to the experiences. 
So please get in touch. If not, you know, you always can reach out to me. You have my email ID on the Rajya Sabha website. Please write to me and I will ensure that you get connected with the right people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sashmit. And uh, yes, we'll, we'll like to hear the last thoughts from uh, Ilana and Neha as well on, on this. In fact, Neha, there's a question for you, but I'm so sorry. I'm, I was trying to understand. Uh, I think there's some typo uh, errors. But the question is, how do you promote sports development in India where the grassroots stages has only been thinking about getting a job via sports and rather not achieving something for the actual sport? Uh, uh, it's... Uh, it's a tricky <laughs> question that's that's been asked and I'm sorry. No, I'm sure, not. sure. I think uh, the simple way to take it up is you need to incentivize a sporting culture in this country. And uh, whatever it takes, the end result will always be great, right? So if that may be the starting point of getting into a sport, Anita Chopra got into sport because of basic fitness, right? His family thought he wasn't too fit and they sent him to the field. They pushed him to the field and today he's gotten us a goal, right? So I think uh, as far as the means may be different, but the ends is in terms of building and developing a sporting culture in the country. Um, it, it just works towards that common purpose that we're all trying to serve over here. So that may be one way of getting more participation into sport in the country where economics plays a very important role. But as far as that leads up to someone seeing a viable career in sport, I've, I mean, Hilana and I've seen hockey players who've now seen a viable career in hockey in a longer term perspective. Um, and not just athletes, we're talking about coaching stuff, we're talking about technical stuff. So there's a lot of opportunity here, which people will see and will be able to recognize as an economy in itself. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Neha. I'll, I'll, I'll move to Ilana. Ilana, I would like to share, I mean, please, uh, your last thoughts on this, please. We've, we've, I think we've had some great uh, uh, points being raised and the time is right. People have to come together. We, we need to, of course, uh, you know, it's just uh, government, federations, entrepreneurs. I think Neha has also uh, encouraged a lot of these entrepreneurs who are on board. So I think, yes, the time is right. But your last thoughts on what now as responsible stakeholders should we be doing? Where to start on that? But, but Doreen, I, I basically think that if you can get um, some of the state governments to really look at Odisha as um, a benchmark of, of what they can achieve. You know, I've in a previous life, I worked in tourism in Australia and in Sydney, and we actually used sports to have a look at, okay, when do we have lulls in the season? And, you know, we know we have weddings and that when they get really busy, but they, you know, we went out as a, you and a lot of these big governments go out and proactively poach events, sports events or um, cultural events to bring people into their uh, city or state during times when it would be lull and that's supporting all the economies and keeping jobs and 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 bringing money into it so I think you know I mean Adisha does a great job we see now and and I, I was there yesterday and it's basically you talk about sports in the country and you can't talk about sports or international sports in India without talking about Odisha it, you know I mean it's a it's a go-to state now you know I mean and I think there's a lot of other states that can learn a lot from Odisha in terms of their tourism in terms of their sports policies which will obviously you know, bring immense benefits across the board to the state. Thank you. Thank you. In fact, yes, I, I agree that the Orissa sports uh, tourism model has been a very successful model and definitely a lot of states can take a cue from it. Before we end the session, Sashmit, there's a last question uh, for you. Uh, this is also from a student of XCBS. Does India need an independent sports regulatory body? Uh, the student is Samrit. No, India already has a sports regulatory body in terms of the infrastructure. It's the Sports Authority of India and you have the Ministry of Sports. So we already have regulations. I believe now the challenge is to ensure that the regulations turn into actions. And I think that is where we have to focus our mind into it. Hockey India is an example about how regulations can enable it. And Hockey India has taken it way ahead. Many, many kudos to Elena and her team. And I'm sure that... Uh, Many other sports, BCC has done it well. They have also taken it forward. They have become very sustainable today. They're, they're maintaining stadiums of their own. They don't need the government. I believe more and more federations and sporting associations who are under the regulations need to appreciate it and need to take a, you know, a, a leaf out of the books of uh, Hockey India and BCCI and become sustainable. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, so thank you, everyone. This has been a wonderful discussion. We, we've we had, uh, like I said, I'm sure for all the entrepreneurs, because all of them are from the domains of 
sports and tourism. These are the two domains from which all these entrepreneurs are. In fact, also would like to inform all of you that, uh, you know, Sashmit spoke about the tourism department. We are, in fact, have organized some exclusive uh, pitching sessions for these entrepreneurs with the sports department, Government of Odessa. Uh, Ilana is going to be a part of it. And also with the tourism uh, department, Government of Odessa, that's, that's another thing which I think is, is really nice for the government uh, to come forward and support us and support these entrepreneurs because uh, they are getting an exclusive uh, window to pitch in their ideas and their, you know, their product, their services, so that they can also contribute to this ecosystem and uh, make this sustainable. So I think that's, that's a, I would like to thank the government for that. And uh, thank you to all our panelists. It's been a very, uh, you know, valuable discussion that we've had. And uh, yes, these are small steps. I understand when we have these panels, uh, it's not that, you know, things change overnight. But the fact that, you know, it's, it, it becomes a networking platform, people come together, we share thoughts, we get ideas. And, uh, you know, particularly when it's it's being done on a platform like this on, uh, you know, Fiki, wherein, uh, you know, there's a lot of audience which is coming in in form of entrepreneurs on the bike platform. I'm sure we are conveying something very, very meaningful to everybody watching uh, uh, this session out there. So a uh, big thank you on behalf of the entire XCBS family to all our panelists and uh, would again, once again, request all of you, please visit uh, the platform. Uh, Neha, of course, uh, is, is a, a, you know, Fiki member. Uh, so Bhagya Mahapatra ji also all, you both represent Fiki. Uh, we'll encourage all of you to please also request other members to come and visit the platform. Uh, tomorrow there's the whole day and these entrepreneurs will really feel good if you go and have an interaction with them. So it's it's a humble request from our side. Thank you once again. Please do. Thank discussion. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Bye.